Our lead story tonight, it's not often that an internal party election dominates headlines as much as this one. It's seen a revolt, a retraction, an apology and a last minute twist. At the end of the day, the election for the post of Congress president is going to be a straight contest between Shashi Tharoor and Malik Arjun Kharge. Kharge's nomination appears to have the blessing of the high command, evidenced by the sheer number of senior leaders who turned up when he filed his papers. Shashi Tharoor, on the other hand, presents himself as the alternative to high command politics. Let's take a look. As Kharge and Shashi Tharoor file their papers, their entry study in contrast. To back the bid of Karge, the 80-year-old Congress loyalist from Karnataka, a formidable presence of the Congress top brass, including Ambika Soni, Mukul Vasnik, Ashok Gelot and Anand Sharma. Karge's entry was a last-minute twist selected by the Gandhis as their man after Ashok Gelot dropped out. The message was conveyed to Karge overnight by Gandhi's trusted leader K.C. Venugopal. His nomination signed by the Congress, who's who, including the dissenting leader Manish Tiwari, as well by former Chief Minister Digvijay Singh, who was all set to run, but backed out after Karge's name went public. So I went to meet him in the morning, and I told him that if you have a form, then I will be with you in the whole way. You are a great leader. मैं कभी भी आपके खिलाफ चुनाव लड़ने की बात सोच भी नहीं सकता लेकिन अब उनका इरादा है फॉर्म भरने का तो मैंने कहा है कि ठीक है मैं आपका प्रस्तावक बनूंगा सत्रह तारीख रिजल्ट्स जो आएंगे वो देखा जाएगा मैं यही अपील करूंगा सारे हमारे डेलीगेट्स जो वोटर्स हैं वो मेरे पक्ष में ज्यादा से ज्यादा बहुमत बनाकर मुझे जिताएंगे ये आशा करता हूं। कारगे डिनाइड दैट ही वाज गोइंग टू बी अ स्टेटस को प्रेसिडेंट इफ इलेक्टेड। व्हाट कारगेस चैलेंजर्स शशित अरूर लैक्ड इन पॉलिटिकल फायर पार ही ट्राइड टू मेक अप इन कलर। व्हाइल द तरूर्स नॉमिनेशन पेपर हैड टेन सिग्नेचर्स इट इंक्लूडेड � the flamboyant Congress MP from Kerala, however, says he is no lightweight, unveiling an elaborate plan to revive the Congress before the media. The key, he says, is to end the high command culture. I intend to release a manifesto which we will send to every one of the 1900 voters, mm. in which we'll put forward certain very important principles for reviving the party. And one of them will be to decentralize the, the, the functioning of the party. Vision statements aside, Tarus faces a formidable challenge. With the Gandhis abandoning their claim to stay neutral, the signal to the 9,000 delegates who vote for the Congress President's post is clear. Officially, the Gandhis say they are not backing any particular candidate in the Congress presidential election. But the giveaway was Mr. Karge's nomination form, which had the signatures of Ashok Gaylord, A.K. Anthony, who wouldn't have signed without the High Command's concurrence. Clearly, the message is loud and clear that there is going to be an election for the Congress president, the first in 22 years. What remains to be seen is whether the party will emerge stronger or weaker after this election. With camera person Sachin, Sunil Prabhu, NDTV. Well, that wasn't all. Shashi Tharoor has had to apologize for a big blunder in his manifesto for the Congress chief's post, an erroneous map of India. He issued a corrected version, but not before the Congress distanced itself from what it described as an egregious or outrageously shocking error. Um, Arvind joining us for more on that. Arvind, uh, it's also sort of uh, causing waves on social media, uh, the BJP in particular, uh, making this out to be an enormous uh, blunder. Yeah, Ankita Shashi Tharoor, who is contesting for the Congress president post, started his campaign uh, uh, on a wrong foot with, with a big blunder uh, in the map. 
that was part of his uh, manifesto for the Congress President election. The moment the manifesto was released, uh, uh, it was pointed out that there is an error in the map wherein uh, Ladakh and parts of Jammu and Kashmir were not included in that map and that created a huge controversy. It made Sashi Tharoor to put a clarification saying that it was an error on the part of the volunteers who designed this entire map and he said that it has been corrected then and there. But, but nevertheless, it was pointed out by BJP. BJP has taken a, a pot shot at uh, Shashi Tharoor saying that this is not the first time that Tharoor is making a mistake on the map, saying that this is the second time he is making a mistake, though Tharoor is claiming that it was not intentional, it was not purpose. Some volunteers who designed this map made this error and it has been cleared, it has been fixed then and there. But uh, nevertheless, it's a, it's a campaign that was started by Shashi Tharoor, the flamboyant campaign uh, that Shashi Tharoor intended to start has started on a wrong foot. So we have right. to wait and watch how this uh, pans out in the coming date. But Shashi Tharoor going to tour across the country uh, canvassing votes for the president polls. Right. Thanks very much indeed, Arvind, for that update. Speaking to NDTV Srinivasan Jain ahead of filing his nomination, Tharoor revealed Sonia Gandhi told him you're welcome to contest and assured him there would be no official candidate as her family would stay neutral. He also tackled the big question for any Congress candidate running for party chief. Will the candidate be a puppet? But you say that this is something you're running seriously. You want to, if you win, change the Congress party. But there are others who would say that you will end up, or whoever wins, ends up as a puppet president. That is still going to be the Gandhis with the remote control. Look, I, I think we'll cross all those bridges when we come to it. I certainly believe that the Gandhis' uh, place in the Congress party, their inextricable links to the DNA hmm. uh, of the party is great. And that there's no question of in any way separating ourselves from them, their legacy and so on. But if they don't want to be actively involved, hmm. I don't understand where the fear comes from. No, but what sort of <laughs> specifically, what sort of role do you see Rahul Gandhi playing? Were you or anyone else to become president, a non-Gandhi, what role I think would, would a Rahul that, Gandhi play? That would really be for him to define. For example... What would you like him to... What sort of role as a president would you like him to play? Well, if I become president in three weeks' time, yes. the Bharat Jodo Yatra still has four more months to run, or three more months to run, and I would certainly be very proud and happy if he continued to, to, to go along on that, on that path. And perhaps I'd go and march with him for a day or two, but not for 150 days. No, but... I'll he can that. do that. No, no, the implication of my question, Shashi, was that... The sense is that even though the Gandhis may not be running, Rahul is not running. But he is, in a sense, de facto still the boss. If you take the Bharat Jodo Yatra right now, which is the, the primary big political activity by the Congress, he's still the face of that. You see, there's no question about the appeal that he and other Gandhi, members, Gandhi, Gandhi family members have to the voting public. So, for the party not to use an asset like this would be foolish. Mm. At the same time, he has made it clear that he doesn't want to play the kind of role that you're suddenly saying you're afraid he'll play. Frankly, if he wanted to be president of the party, he could do it with a snap of his fingers tomorrow. He's chosen not to. Hmm. So I think it's, 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 it's an implication of bad faith for you to suggest hmm. that having declined a job he could have had, he will then interfere with other people doing the job. I don't see that that makes any sense as an argument. No, only because even during this time when he's not been president, a lot of the key decisions taken by the party are attributed to him. Well, I so think you have to ask the Congress kind of president driving. if that's the case, so whether she was the one who uh, took or approved these decisions. So, look, let's, let's, let's wait. If the party wants to turn over a new leaf, Let's give the party the opportunity. Why are we sitting here speculating? Okay, about fair enough. Let's assume, that, let's assume that he's not actually going to be, or they are not going to be doing the remote control. But in terms of a face of the Congress, the, you know, who's the leader, especially as you go into 2024, you have an election coming up. Is, the, is it going to be him? Or if you're the president, should it be you? Look, all of these things, frankly, this is honest, something we'll happily deal with. Why not have all the faces involved? I mean, one of the great slogans mm. of the UPA in 2014 mm. uh, against Mr. Modi's sort of rather uh, obsessive sort of focus on himself was man he hum. We are really a party of the hums. We are a party of we. We want people to come together. We want large numbers of qualified, experienced people. And do remember to tune in to that uh, interview at uh, 8.30 p.m. Moving on, the RBI hiked a key lending rate to a three-year high today and loans are now likely to get a lot more expensive. The RBI's move is expected to put more pressure on household budgets already stretched because of high inflation. And that leads to the other big fear, lower growth.
The three takeaways from the Reserve Bank of India's monetary policy decision. Number one, the central bank announced its fourth straight rate hike, raising interest rates by 50 basis points to a near three-year high of 5.9%. Secondly, the Reserve Bank cut its growth forecast for the current year to 7% from 7.2% as the quarter one growth missed expectations. Thirdly, while retaining its inflation forecast at 6.7%, the Reserve Bank had a warning for food prices. The inflation trajectory remains clouded with uncertainties arising from continuing geopolitical tensions and nervous global financial market sentiments. Your bank loan and FD interest rates are set to rise after this announcement. Since April till before this hike, RBI has announced rate hikes of 140 basis points. And SBI's home loan interest rate increased exactly in line with that. Getting a 50 lakh SBI home loan for a period of 20 years is now 25% more expensive with higher interest rate compared with April this year. With this rate hike, loan and FD rates are expected to go up by 50 basis points again. This is bad news for 28-year-old Fez Ahmad who's on the verge of finalizing a 10 lakh rupee loan from a bank in UP's Hapur to construct a house on a plot of land that he has inherited. Today's hike by half a percentage point was in line with expectations as the Reserve Bank of India fights inflation that has been above the 6% comfort level for the whole year and is likely to remain so. Sharply rising interest rates across economies such as the United States, UK and India are steps to control soaring inflation. But they're raising serious risks of a global economic slowdown and even a recession. The Reserve Bank has taken another step to control inflation. But a fear is whether we'll pay for that with lower growth. In New Delhi with Mohammed Adnan in Hapur, Priyanshi Sharma for NDTV. And the markets ended a seven-day losing streak, gaining 1.8%. The Sensex gained over 1,000 points, ending at 57,427. The Nifty gained 276 points, ending at 17,094. This was the biggest jump in a month. The rupee recovered by 50 paise, ending at 81.35 to the dollar. Seven months after Russia's President Putin's invasion of Ukraine, now what appears to be the annexation. At a glittering ceremony at Moscow's Kremlin, Putin has declared four key regions in Ukraine are now Russian. The move comes eight years after Russia's annexation of Crimea and has been roundly condemned by the West. Жить ее судьбой, побеждать вместе с ней. За нами правда, за нами Россия. Владимир Владимирович Путин. Seven months after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a formal ceremony to annex four regions. Donetsk, Lugansk, Kherson and Zaporizhia. With executive orders passed by Russian President Vladimir Putin announcing these Ukrainian territories as Russian. Leonid Ivanovich Pasichnik. As Kremlin celebrates, Ukraine rallies support for itself in face of the annexation of its territory. Это позор и вранье с какими-то псевдореферендумами, с какими-то признаниями и аннексиями закончится для России еще большим позором. Никто не должен участвовать в позорной войне. Shameless and transparent effort by Russia. The rest of the West joined Zelensky in condemning the referendum as an illegal land grab, an annexation that is unacceptable. Never recognize Russia's. The United States will never, never, never recognize Russia's claims on Ukraine sovereign territory. The UN called upon Russia to act as a responsible permanent five member of the United Nations Security Council. I want to underscore that the so-called referenda in the occupied regions were conducted during active armed conflict in areas under Russian occupation and outside Ukraine legal and constitutional framework. They cannot be called the genuine expression of the popular will.
Despite stiff opposition from the West and some of the most stringent sanctions, Putin remains defiant. The UN too has called it a dangerous escalation. Eight years after Crimea, Russia's next move to change the map. Bureau report, NDTV. Meanwhile, back home, India's monsoon rainfall has been 6% higher than normal, but overall, that, that is the overall figure, but it is the excess rainfall in the central and southern parts of the country that's made up for the massive deficit in the east and the northeast. Prime Minister Modi is in uh, Gujarat for a four-city tour, launching a clutch of projects and pointing out that his BJP uh, has uh, spent 21 years governing Gujarat. That visit, of course, coming ahead of state elections uh, towards the end of the year. The Prime Minister has already launched infrastructure projects worth 29,000 crores. Today, he inaugurated the first phase of the Ahmedabad Metro Rail project and uh, the work of the new Ahmedabad railway station was launched as well. The launch of the third Vande Bharat Express from Gandhinagar to Mumbai also took place. 160 kilometers per hour speed in just 140 seconds. That's what the upgraded version of Vande Bharat Express boasts. Along with features like on-demand content with Wi-Fi facility, 3-hour battery backup and GPS systems, the third Vande Bharat Express in India has been flagged off from Gandhinagar in Gujarat. Prime Minister Modi took a ride on the train to Ahmedabad along with those from the railways and women entrepreneurs. The semi-high-speed train will connect Gandhinagar and Mumbai, the state capitals of Gujarat and Maharashtra. This is the first train with airplane-like bio-vacuum toilets with touch-free amenities and also has a special lavatory for specially abled passengers. The seats handles are provided with seat numbers in braille letters to assist the visually challenged passengers. The train also saves about 30% of electricity with advanced regenerative braking system. <laughs> अंदर जितनी आवाज आती है वंदे भारत ट्रेन में वो आवाज शायद सौवें हिस्से की हो जाती है मैं वंदे भारत ट्रेन में देख रहा था आराम से मैं लोगों से बातचीत कर रहा था क्योंकि कोई आवाज ही नहीं थी बाकी इसका मतलब जो लोग हवाई जहाज के आदि हैं उनको अगर ये आवाज के विषय में ज्ञान हो जाएगा मैं पक्का मानता हूं वो हवाई जहाज नहीं वंदे भारत ट्रेन पसंद करेंगे